That was your friend or you already knew him? That's my friend. Okay. Good morning, good morning. All right. I don't know what we got here. Oh. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Top of the morning. Come on in the room. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome. I'm Pastor Dale Fontenot. Welcome to the Sunday services of New Life Church of God. Our home base is right here in Palmetto. I'm grateful that you can join in and be under our tent today. Today, we want to be encouraged as we look uh, at, at, at meeting these. Uh, we've been in a month-long study here at New Life about finding and fulfilling the need of, uh, of people today. And so we can halt between two opinions. Uh, I want to encourage you, believe God. God is real. And we're going to trust him. We're going to acknowledge him. And he's going to show up in my ways, even in this 21st century. The Lord bless you. Come on in the room. We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord this morning as we assemble ourselves in the sanctuary this morning. We're under the tent uh, this morning, so to speak. We'll hear a little bit more about that as we continue on. Uh, on the, a wet, wet, rainy season that we're in, seemingly, huh? But uh, we're so grateful that we can unite ourselves in praise in a place like this and uh, to exalt the Lord. I'm grateful this morning for a sanctuary to gather into, a place, an in-gathering. I uh, just told the Lord that this morning. Thank you for a place that we can come in and uh, to worship the Lord and to do our part in what God is doing, what God is up to. And so just want to encourage us uh, to put our eyes on God, even as we worship him this morning. Put your eyes on God. 
There's so much around you to discourage you. There's so much around you to give you despair. Put your eyes on God. Allow him to show up to be mighty and strong in all of your lives uh, this morning. So as we get started this morning in uh, our worship time, we're just going to uh, breathe a word of prayer this morning as we welcome the presence of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise as we enter into the sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we heard in our hearts and our spirits the invitation to enter into the sanctuary of God. There are those who have entered, Lord God, uh, with burdens on their hearts. They've come through trials and tribulations, even this week, oh God. Some, Lord God, are looking for a miracle. I thank you that you are a miracle-providing God, and we bless your name for that, Lord. And so our prayer this morning is about helping us to focus in on you, to worship you this morning, oh God, that everybody can come on and praise the Lord. Praise is in order. Our worship is in order, not just on Sunday mornings, but each and every day, oh God, you're welcomed in this place this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. We stand for the reading of our scripture, and then we're going to have our song of the day as uh, we uh, prepare ourselves this morning. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 is uh, where we are this morning, and as we understand what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is saying unto us, uh, our text of scripture from our message is going to be taken from 1 Kings chapter 18. But I want to read uh, verses 38 and 39. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. That's our profession. Join in together. Sister Susan going to lead us in our song of the morning as we exalt the name of the Lord today. Remain standing if you are physically able as we call on the name of the Lord in praise. Good morning, saints. Give glory to God, but wait us up one more time. We ought to praise him because he is worthy to be praised.
to allow us to enter into the tent of meeting. Father God, where we have a place to come and open up our hearts, open up our minds, and Father God, gain understanding of your perfect will that is to be done in this earth. So we give you praise this morning, we give you honor, we give you glory that you're a good God, that you're a loving God, that you're a merciful God, that you sent heaven's best, that indeed that we might have a right to life from this one. Father God, that you sent love unto your earth, Father God, for the greatest love to act that we know the man today is called forgiving and that Christ came and that he died on the cross for the remission of our sins that we might have a right to life that we might come boldly before the throne of grace so again we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory we glorify and magnify your name for that sacrifice that Christ made for us that he showed us love God, I ask that you would open up the hearts and the minds of each and every individual that's here, that they might walk in a, a new anointing, that they might walk in love, Father God, that we might walk in understanding, knowing that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith on this morning. So I thank you. I ask for more of your glory right now in the name of Jesus. More of your glory in our community. More of your glory in our church, in our sanctuary, in our time of gathering. More of your glory that you would saturate. Father God, that your presence would be felt in this place. That your presence would be felt in this small community of Pamela, Louisiana. Father God, that there's such a great anointing that would fall. That lives would be changed. And souls would be saved for the kingdom of God. So I give you praises. Because you're a good God, that you're a loving God, that you're a merciful God, that one day you saved the rich, like me, that quickened me. Father, that you hid me behind the cross for such a time as this. So I send your word this morning, Father God. I send your word to those that may be sick and shut in, or those that are still struggling this morning with the COVID virus. I send your word that healing the healing the land this morning, Father God. Because I believe that your healing is the children's bread. Father, I send your word this morning for those that are wrestling with demonic spirits and that are being tormented in their mind on this morning, Father God. I send the word of peace. The peace that would surpass it. All understanding on this morning, Father God. Because we know there is no other way. You said in your word that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I realize that they may have sought to seek God on this morning, Father God. But I said you would send a man that would lay down his life for the love of the brother. And that he might preach the gospel of Jesus. That they might share the gospel of love. That they may be compassionate to their fellow man. So I give you praise this morning. I give you honor. I give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the saints of God say amen. 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 And amen. God bless you.
right, I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Somebody came in and said, well, I already gave up. I'm, I'm just waiting for my time to come. No, no, no. Stay on the battlefield. Keep trusting in the Lord. I'm telling you, the enemy is doing everything he can to keep you from trusting God. And so as we have prayed together with confidence and in faith, we're going to see God do great and marvelous things right. because we recognize that that's who our God is. And this morning, as we come to you with the message of the day, uh, we're going to direct your attention back to 1 Kings chapter 18. The, the, the title of the message is Two Opinions. And uh, just some summary work that you have challenged me to do and to be about through our assignment through the month of August. I want to begin to tie some pieces together, but want to encourage you to keep on trusting God, to keep on elevating him, knowing who he is and how God has designed to do great and marvelous things. And so as we ready ourselves for the message of the day, I pray that you have taking on and believed and received what you have been believing for, even in our time together, as you are encouraged to trust the Lord and to praise the Lord. I'm telling you, God is up to something marvelous for those of us who are aware, who are in tune, and in faith believe it. And so our challenge today is not to get on the sidelines of faith, but keep on on being in faith, walking in faith. Everything that we do, I'm telling you, is worth it, is worth it. The songwriter says, if heaven never was promised to me, it's been worth having the Lord in my life. Hmm. Some of us are just trying to mark time until we get to heaven. No, there's more to that indeed. We can enjoy the abundance of life right here in the earth. We're going to have our sermonic hymn today. Uh, Sister Susan comes and leads us. Yes, God is real. Amen.
in our culture and our times push us away from the realness of you oh God you challenge us continually Lord God to live in accordance to your word to your will speak to us afresh and anew this morning oh God as uh, we have been challenged to look at the world around us look at our lives look at what we are doing what we're called to be even as a people of faith so speak to us fresh and um, your word is anointed May we seek and to sense how you are anointing us as your followers. There's someone under the sound of my voice that's uncertain about their love for you and their walk with you, Lord. I pray that they may be convinced. I know that the Spirit of God is at work, and we give the Spirit of God permission to have its way in our lives and our times today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 One verse I want to highlight it before you're seated this morning. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21 uh, is what I want to read. As we opened, we looked at the, um, the ending portion of uh, this epic account of Elijah. And so verse 21, 
Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Yes. But if Baal is God, right. follow him. But the people said nothing. You may be seated this morning as we drill down into the word and what the word is saying and speaking unto us on, uh, on this morning. As we said, that the church has been on uh, an assignment for almost a month for the greater part of uh, the month of August, uh, particularly during our Wednesday evening sessions as uh, I wanted to position myself to hear from you better. I wanted to be the audience of one, if you will. Uh, I knew God already knew, so he, he wasn't a part of the audience, and so I became an audience of one. As we look at this, the world that we're living in now and identifying what are the needs of people. And so we walk through um, a, a series of lessons, a series of hearing, hearing assignments, if you will, um, that, uh, that we looked at. And uh, as we enter into this fall season, we've declared a type of a new beginning for us as a church, even as we enter into the fall season. And uh, in looking at that, uh, we recognize what the Lord is doing. And so in doing so, um, we have declared that we want to look at identifying the various needs of people people that we live amongst, people that we engage with, what we are seeing and observing in our times, many times, sometimes in our lives, family members, those who maybe burden us and that we're trying to uh, establish some type of Jesus relationship with them. Uh, we wanted to simply position or better position the church to reach out to serve people, to help identify and to address the needs that are around us, rather than just gathering in our four walls and to keep on doing what looks like church stuff and we're, we're the faithful God and you have to bless us and you have to pour down a blessing upon us because everybody else has failed and every, no one else is serving you. But we've called, we understand that we have been called to meet the needs of people, to serve the people that we are around. And so this past Wednesday night, um, I, I kind of compiled what I heard you saying, what I heard the conversation being, and looking, uh, my conversation in particular identified uh, the needs of those of us who are under the tent. Yeah. And we identified our gatherings on Sunday mornings, those who tune in and to view our gathering as those of us who are under the tent, so to speak, and wanting to make sure we, I, I spoke about what you can expect from this ministry, from this pulpit, what you can expect uh, as you are, as you come under the tent. And so we did some talking uh, pre presentations on that. And then we talked about those who are not under the tent the tent of New Life Church of God, and what becomes our responsibility for those who are not under the tent. We welcome whosoever will to come under the tent. If you got to slip in underneath, come and get fed, get spiritually fat, and go back out and to burn that spiritual fat as you serve the word of the world around us. And so we're not caught up into that, but however way you choose to be under the tent, we welcome you to be under the tent. Uh, but understand that you are under the tent so that we can push you out, so that we can push you out to serve your fellow humankind, so that you can be actively engaged in what God is doing in the world. And so we spent some time talking about those of us under the tent, those who are not under the tent. And then we ch were challenged and looked at, at Jesus and how Jesus viewed the people of, the, of his time, as he looked out, we looked at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. And uh, as Jesus looked upon the multitude of people, that verse lets us know that Jesus had compassion on the people. Oh, yeah. 
in the original language, it, it moved with compassion was almost like a moving, something deep that was within him. Moved with compassion. I can break it down a little bit more, but I choose not to for the daintiness of this particular time. But he was moved with compassion and know that some of our bodily functions operate under that moving. And so literally in the Greek, Jesus was moved right. with compassion. When was the last time we were moved with compassion in observing people, troubled people, people who are struggling with life, and we have those that we identify as those who have and those who don't have and those who are not good enough and those who may be good enough. When we, when we look at, at, at how often we are moved, with compassion as we view the world around us. That 36th verse goes on to say that Jesus was moved with compassion because the people were harassed and helpless. Harassed and helpless. Whoever can get something, you go ahead and get it and you live your life, don't worry about anybody else. Everybody else is just left out and left from behind. But Jesus looked at the people. They were harassed and they were helpless. And the scripture goes on to say that they were like sheep without a shepherd. Like sheep without a shepherd. And so church, I speak to you to say that we are to arise and to proclaim the newness, the new life in Christ to whosoever will, to the world around us. We are called to proclaim this new life even as we are discipled to live this new life. And, and we proclaim that yes, there is still hope in the world. There is still hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We still lift up that message of hope. And what we're saying, church, is that we're not going to be reactionary to what's going on in the culture of our day. We're just not going to gather and to be reactionary to all that is wrong, what's going wrong with the children, what's going wrong with sexual identities, what's going wrong with anger and hatred and vision and malice. We're, we're choosing not to be reactionary, but we're going to continue to anchor our faith in God. In the midst of it, understanding the importance of you and I anchoring our faith in God and keep on lifting up Jesus. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. And so rather than simply being, being reactionary to what's going on in the world, we're going to spend the time anchoring our faith in God. I will trust. In the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. So as we are anchoring ourselves, understand what we are giving you, what we are feeding you, what you are being discipled for to be anchored. Your faith to be anchored. Our text of scripture today, again, it tells of that epic encounter that the prophet uh, Elijah had against the 450 prophets of Baal. It's, it's an exciting text of scripture. In your time, maybe later today, the afternoon, you can read the entirety of that 18th chapter, but it's an epic account of God really showing up. And so there's so much here in First Kings 18 to preach about, but I want to highlight Elijah's statement to the people there in verse 21. That's where we're going to drill down. That's where we're just going to lay our anchor for today when Elijah says and tells the people how long will you waver between two opinions if the Lord is God follow him if Baal is God then go ahead and follow him don't waver between two opinions and what does the next line say but the people said nothing they remained on the fence. Sometimes I feel like God is with me. Sometimes I feel like he's not with me. Well, maybe it looks a little better over here. Man, the people got it going on. They got money. They got bling bling. I don't know. Maybe on this side is, you know, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. 
but Elijah still but how long will you waver between two opinions and so even as we're living here in the 21st century as we're living in a time and a culture as we're living in a country that is not identified as a Christian country in essence when we see what's going on, and my, my constant admonition to you is to, is to process and to think and to be aware of what's going on around you. Don't be just sucked up into what's going on. Understand it. Identify it. Study it. Realize where is it going? Where is it coming from? What's the, what's the very the, the nature of what's being presented unto you to be challenged in that? And don't waver. So my message today is for those of us who are under the tent. Those of us who are under the tent. Don't waver between two opinions. Don't waver with the understanding that sometimes I'm going to put my religion down and handle business like I want to handle it. Or you just please excuse me, but I, I got to take care of this like I need to take care of this. Because God has not come through. The more I trust in God, the more things go wrong for me. What is this? What is this? Maybe I need to waver. Maybe I need to go back to my days that I used to live and how I used to live. And Elijah stood up before the people. How long will you waver between two opinions? Yeah, I believe God is good, but you know what? I'm just not ready to serve him. But he's good. I'm, I'm going to give him the tipping of my hat, but I, I'm not ready. How long will you waver? The world today is here to suck you up, to destroy you, to kill you, to take hope away from you. How long will you waver between two opinions? And friends, this is not the time in our world's history to waver between two opinions. Oh, yeah. God is God. Yes, is. Let God be God. And yes, God is real. Yes, is. God is real. For I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real. We're living in perilous days. We're living where there is so much, so little to anchor our lives down. We're living in a day that every day the values are being rewritten. Every day individuals are giving permission to live like you want to. Don't worry about anybody else. Let them fend for themselves. We're living in perilous times. And literally when we can see with the eyes of Jesus, he sees the multitudes of people, and he sees them as harassed and helpless, looking like they got it together, looking like they found whatever balance in life, and God gets just a little bit of the credit. Uh, but when Jesus looks at them harassed and hopeless, some of you may feel that you're harassed and helpless in life by what life continues to bring to your doorstep and you may feel that you are a bit harassed and a bit helpless but know that even as you come under this tent you do not necessarily have to feel harassed and helpless that there is hope there there is an anger for you there is an assurance for you that you don't have to feel that you're just out there among the wolves day in and day out we don't have to feel or to live in a way that we are harassed and helpless. We understand and identify that generation after generation, they are, they are being deceived. The needs of people are not being met, being deceived. Let the government meet all of your needs. Continue to cry out to the government. Continue to try to get what you can get now. Again, generation after generation, they've been deceived. The happiness that they find is only temporary. The happiness that they find is only because they, they are on some type of high. They are on some type of buzz. And that's the only way that they can feel happy. The only way they can feel happy is to, is to push somebody further down in life and let them be like the big man. And that's the only way that they can find happiness. People are being deceived. Eyes, spiritual eyes are being blinded to the real state that's being presented unto them. But we here, we're proclaiming the truth that God is real. 
The God who is our creator has loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that as we choose to believe in him and to live a life of faith that we can have everlasting abundant life. We can experience the fullness of life no matter what our state may be physically because Jesus is our everything. We can be well anchored to face whatever it is that comes the way of the world. We're here to proclaim the truth that God is real. He is a need-meeting God. And don't lose track of that. God is a need-meeting God. Don't be deceived. Don't think that what you're going through now is because your past life, you deserve everything bad happening to you. Understand that when Jesus says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free from the torments of your past. You're free from the difficulties that haunted you when you lived your life like the biggest devil ever. The Apostle Paul says, I was the chief of sinners, but he recognized that he has been created. He was created to be at the top and not at the bottom, to be more than a conqueror in spite of his past. So understand that God is a need-meeting God, and we don't lose track of that. And so now we are being discipled to live this new life with God. We're being discipled, intentionally being discipled as the word comes forth to nurture us, as a prayer environment hovers and covers our lives, as we are challenged to live our lives in the marketplaces, day in and day out where we go, as we're taught of the wonderful power of love, of loving the world, of serving those who hate us and spitefully use us. Yeah. That's a discipling that's taking place well. where we can understand no is no longer I. But it's Christ yeah. that lives in me. That's the discipling part when you know that Christ lives within me. Right. Pastor, I want that to happen. I'm going to come to the altar today to pray that it happens. Listen, it doesn't take place just in one prayer over you. It's about All you right. being intentional. Again, under the tent, there are discipling experiences, discipling times that are there under the tent. Come on under the tent. Be under the tent when there is the discipling time, where there's the time and the sense of being accountable to our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Disciple to live this new life. Now, you can choose to complain about life. You can choose to gripe about your situation. And yeah, I'm sure your situation is bad. I'm sure your situation is terrible. I, I don't doubt that. If you find reason that you can gripe and about the life that you are living, the life that's around you, the situations that you have. You can choose to gripe and complain, but understand, folk who are under the tent, you don't have to. You don't have to live your life griping and complaining. You don't have to. I heard the story about two wives who were doing their laundry in the laundry mat, and they were both mending their husband's clothes where they had been worn and had been tattered. And one wife said to the other, she said, my husband is miserable. He's just an angry man. Just around the house, we have to walk on eggshells. Nothing is right at his job. He comes home and he's always complaining about what's going on on his job. And when we go to church, he's just terrible. He says the preacher is an idiot and the song leader can't sing, just complaining about everything. And the other wife said to the first wife, he says, my husband is so excited about life. Oh, he just can't wait to go to church. He can't wait for the blessing. He can't wait just to worship and to praise. He can't wait but to receive the word of God. He loves the sermons of the preacher, preacher. At home, we laugh all the time. It's just a joy to have my husband at home. Well, it got quiet there in the morning <laughs> room as the women continued to sew on the pants of their husbands. 
One was patching the seat of, of her husband's pants. The other was patching the knees of her husband's pants. Guess which husband is which? The one who wore out his bottom or the one that wore out his knees in prayer. Life is hard, life is difficult. Yeah. But we, we get to choose how we will face our life, how we will face our day, how we will face our trouble, how we will face our consequences. And so as we are turning the corner into a new season as the church, as we enter the fall season, are you having two opinions about what you are believing? And I'm speaking to those of us who are under the tent of New Life Church this morning. You're having about two, are you having two opinions about what you believe? Please understand that you can know God for yourself. If you're not having the relationship with God for yourself, it's not God's problem. Amen. It's where we have made a decision that I don't have the time. It's not worth it. Uh, I'm just happy right where I am. Okay, we all have that particular choice if you're happy right where you are. I'm telling you as you face life, as you deal with the culture of the day, as you deal with the issues of the day, if you choose to be that one that complains and gripes and is never happy and always just upset and uh, never have a joy, you know, it, it's your choice. What we're saying that under the tent, we don't have to present ourselves that way. You can know God for yourself. A growing relationship is available unto you. It's encouraged for you to have. Yes, you can have it. Tune in. Stay tuned. Observe what's being provided for you, what's being offered to you. Observe what's being modeled for you. Observe the mentoring opportunities, the mentoring relationships that are availing themselves unto you. Either way, whatever opinion you may have, life will still happen. There will be challenges. There will be crisis moments. But as we proclaim Jesus unto you, be open to be discipled in him, to become more and more like Christ. We, don't, we no longer have to say that, well, at least I'm not like so and so. Ah, there's more to it. There's more to it than that. Uh, we are discipled to be Christ-like. That is the goal. That is with Christ within us, when we can put this flesh into check, that becomes our goal. We can be discipled in him. We don't have to face our week half cocked, just waiting for something to knock us off the block. And we knocked off the block, just waiting for something to bring on a negative attitude again. And then we blame that issue for causing us to respond in a negative way. We're blaming other people rather than we taking responsibility for our lives, rather than we doing the necessary repenting when we have to repent. And so as we do that proclamation, we're open to be discipled. And we want the world around us to know that they too can be discipled to live this Christian walk, this walk in Christ. We don't have to face life half cocked, just ready to be snapped at a drop of a hat. As we close our time together this morning, Many of you, most of you know that two years ago I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And in going to the doctor's office and the doctor coming and letting me know the results of that biopsy, then driving home and having that 30 minute drive home, processing what the doctor has just told you, that you now have cancer cells that are in your body. It was an interesting time home. They had drive home, they had the various thoughts that rolled through your mind, one of the obviously, why me? God, I thought I was doing this and why does this come upon my table? Why do I have to face this? All these, don't let anybody fool you. And I, I don't wanna fool you, because I want you to know the thoughts that went through my mind. 
in processing all of this and thinking through all of the repercussions of this particular concern, of this particular need. And so many thoughts cross your mind, even before you pick up the phone to tell the first family member you process this and you think through this and you try to understand and to research what's going on and what's there. And so all of it understand was really working towards the conclusion of the matter, which was God, you have permission to work through my life, okay? God, I give, I give up my right for what I want to happen in my life. And so from this moment on, from the diagnosis on, God, you have my permission to work through my life, that my life would be lived for your glory. Amen. For your glory. See, I, I want to I wanna just show you the modeling of discipling, being discipled. Because after everything processes, you can go home and you can cry, you can fall out, why me, why me, oh God, what did I do so wrong? Or you can process it in the sense to reach a conclusion, God, whatever happens, you receive the glory in my life, in how I live my life, in what happens to my life. Working through that conclusion that God, you have my permission to receive the glory in my life. And so discipleship, maturing, growing in Christ brings us into a faith that God is real, and God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, of all that we can think or even to ask. To understand that discipling brings us closer and closer. God, I want to be obedient to yeah, you. Yeah. God, I want to follow what you have. I want to do your will. Yeah. I want to serve you. I don't want to be half cocked in life. Discipleship brings you that maturing, that growth that's there in your life. So discipleship brought me into a faith for my healing. A faith for my healing. Life happens to all of us. I want us to know that God has been offered to us to help us to face life, to help us to face whatever life brings across my way, across your way. God is not just out there, something just twiddling his fingers. Waiting to, waiting to shoot us down, waiting to knock us down. But God is a God of love. God is a God who told us to ask, to seek, to knock. God is a God that, that says that I love you more than you could have ever imagined. Enter into relationship with me. Discipleship brings us into that. Brings us into a faith. For whatever we are confronted with, God, you receive the glory. God, it was your idea about this blessing in my life. It was your idea about your favor. I see this in your word. And I'm learning and discipling myself to take you at your word. And so last year, as I reported, you guys heard of my second biopsy that revealed no cancer. And so giving thanks and praise unto God through the biopsy and, and even for the men of the prostate. The prostate is a, it's about the size of a walnut, they tell me, size of a big pecan, if you will, with that particular piece. Biopsy is they take tissue samples, 10 tissue samples off of that particular prostate, that particular, and they take 10 tissue samples and they send it all to look under the microscope to find it. And or last year, the doctor was telling me that on a couple of samples from the tissue, there were little squiggly cells, but it was not cancerous. And so there were no, none of the tissue cells came back uh, with any cancer cells on them. And so earlier this month, I had yet a third biopsy, becoming an annual biopsy. And the results of this biopsy, again, there was no cancer. No cancer to be found. And the doctor told me, he said, I think you made a, the right decision when you didn't let me take your prostate two years ago. And then he said, as a matter of fact, every, every, every tissue that I took, 
They had no squiggly little cells. Every tissue was clean. It was just perfect. Every tissue that I took. I say that to encourage you that God is a God who wants to be in relationship yes, with you. He knows everything that's going on with you. He knows your burdens. He knows what stresses you out. He knows what, what you go weary on. God wants to be in relationship with you. He wants you to know that he's a God who hears your cry. He'll never leave you. He'll never save you. Why not serve God? Why not acknowledge him? Why not give everything? and the casting our nets out. Right. Trying to, try to, the harvest is ripe, as we said yeah. on Wednesday night, but the laborers are few. When those of us can arise with the relationship with God and to, to walk in the faithful manifestation of the power of God on our lives, people are looking for power. They're looking for testimonies. They're looking for God doing something great and marvelous. Our God is an awesome God. Never be mistaken about that. Worthy of our praise, even if you don't give it to him. He's still worthy of our praise, of our adoration. We need to stop keeping God in just a small container in a small box. Let him be God over our lives. Let God be everything to us. 